Hello? This is one mana left. I'm at the tail end of Affliction League, and we're getting ready for the uh, announcements around Necropolis League. And I want to share with you guys today a bit of testing I did. So, if you're familiar with kind of the state of the game lately, one is Melee's in a little bit of a bad spot. And two is this league was really dominated by a skill called Penance Brand of Dissipation. Um, if you take every skill gem in the game and you boil it down to just pure math, you can basically calculate what the damage effectiveness per second that that skill can deal is. And before this league went live, I did that math on every new skill gem they announced. Uh, so all the transfigured gems and all the nerfed and buffed gems, I just, at the start of the league, I go through, I do the math, I figure out what is the damage effectiveness per second that this skill could do in theory. And... Two of them jumped out as way ahead of the rest. And the first one was Penance Brand of Dissipation. Because that skill gem at 20 stacks, which is not that hard to get, does an immense amount of damage. Second place, however, was a skill called Molten Strike of the Zenith. Now, this, this gem was a notch or two down from Penance Brand. However, every other skill gem in the entire game was about 10 notches down from this one. This is a skill that makes us, or every fifth Molten Strike just destroys everything. It does five additional projectiles that do 11 times damage every fifth attack. This is like stupid levels of damage. Uh, the, the catch is you have to use a two-hander. So you would think in an ARPG, just giving someone the option to do like three to five times more damage than any other skill at the price of having to wield a two-hander would be pretty appealing, right? Well, unfortunately, let's look at uh, PoE Ninja for this league, and you will find, in fact, that Molten Strike of the Zenith is at a 0.1% play rate. This is in the rounding error for no one played it. Uh, Molten Strike itself is at 2%. That's actually not that bad, considering if you, like, break down the ladder on, like, you know, how much is playing Penance Bram, whatever, how much is just, like, Fulcrum Chieftains and stuff, how much is playing Tornado Shot. 2% is not that bad, but the thing is, a lot of these are armor stackers. And some of them are like Ephemeral Edge, Int Stack Tricksters, stuff like that. Because in the game the way it is right now, one-handers are just like better. And, and shield combos often really push that over the top. So most of the strongest setups in the game use a combination of a one-hander and a shield. You very, very rarely see setups that use two-handers. So even though you come along and give them a gem that does like three to five times more damage at the cost of wielding a two-hander... 0.1% of people played it. Well, here's the thing. Is, uh... This build just does stupid damage. And I'm gonna show you that here. So, this is a POB I have for this setup. And, uh... It does a lot of damage. Alright? Now, there's something to note here that this is the fifth attack. So, the real damage of this setup is basically every four attacks do, like, 10% the damage. And then the fifth attack does, like, 100% the damage. So really, in a cycle of 5 hits, you do 1.4 real hits, roughly. Like, the Zenith hit is the 1, and the 4 other hits are the 0.4. So, that... Oops, I'm off my factor 10. It's really about 28% of this number. So, my real damage with this POB right now... Is about 2 billion. Okay. Uh, I've done some testing on this. I'll show off a few things here, but I'm playing this as a mana setup, which might seem weird to most people, or you might think I'm just doing this as some weird challenge, but let me explain how you get to multi-billion damage, alright? The way you do it is you have sources of damage that can scale to the moon, like your typical like stat stacker type build, you know, they have a source of damage that scales to the moon, and it's... A multiplier on their overall damage. Uh, this is how a good build works. And this is how a build gets like 100 million DPS. 
but this is not how a very good build works. This is not how a build gets multi-billion DPS. The way a build gets multi-billion DPS is you have to have a source like that that scales to the moon. And then you have to have another source like that that also scales to the moon. And then those need to multiply together. And, uh... Well, fortunately, mana stackers have that luxury. So I am using an end god, as I typically do. I am using it to get 2,000% spell damage for Battle Mage's Cry. I happen to have a good amount of War Cry effect. You know, there's some War Cry effects, some War Cry effects, some War Cry effects, some War Cry effects, some double damage. I'm scaling some War Cry effect, all right? And that means that my percent damage from end god is, like, close to 5,000%, which is like 10 times more than what most builds run. Uh, the other way I'm getting damage is I'm getting flat damage. So I'm using a two-hander, right? I'm using this Judgment Staff. You might think, ooh, this looks like a piece of crap. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's time for the real weapon. Time for the lightsaber. So I am using a two-handed Energy Blade, which if you're a mana stacker that's scaling ES into mana, or other way around, mana into ES... You might just find yourself an energy blade that has 12,000 top end. So, yeah, you know, your good two-handers out there might have like a 1,000 damage. But uh, my, my two-hander is a little bit better than your two-hander. Because I'm, I'm double-dipping on the mana stack damage. So, uh, this gets you to a point where you can do a lot of damage. Uh, let me show you. Allow me to do a lot of damage. All right, look at this. We got endurance charges and monster life. Perfect. I'm on Uber. Yep. So let me show you guys real quick here what a lot of damage looks like. We got the typical Uber Exarch. I'm going to kill him really fast. So he has a little bit of damage reduction at the start. But watch, watch the hit sequence. Ready? Go. There he goes. So, you saw he was at like 90% there. And then he immediately goes to like 50 dead. That's the Zenith proc, the fifth hit of all the projectiles hit him, and then all the projectiles return, and he dies. Uh, so, yeah. This does a lot of damage. Um, but, you know what? Ubers with two tank mods... There's tankier things in this game. In fact, this league, there's much tankier things in this game. Um, so, may, let me show you a few more examples of this. I decided to put the, some of these into clips to save time for sake of, like, compacting the video. But this is a depth 1935 Ahuatl. He has 2.147 billion health because that is the HP pack, cap and Path of Exile. Let's see how fast he dies when he respawns here in phase two. Holy damn it. So that was just over a second. That was like 1.2, 1.3 seconds on the replay. And that was not as optimized as I have the setup right now. But that's an HP cap monster. So, we're doing what is the par for the course damage for the most elitist of mana stacker builds. And we're doing it on a melee skill. Uh, so, naturally, this build is really good for um, just doing insane, like, top-end damage. And having, like, okay clear. Because, I mean, you're still at the end of the day, like... Oh, by the way, I just realized something. Oh, no, I do have an ancestral call. Okay. Uh, you get the benefit of being able to strike four times with a strike skill like this is why molten strikes a good delve skill for things like armor stacker um because you can just you know do four hits but it's not like something like flicker strike where they hit each thing with molten strike it's full shotgun aoe so if you hit two things it shotguns both of them so this is actually not even like the craziest single target skill this is actually much better suited for aoe and most of the time in the game, having the ability to kill a max HP monster um, is kind of the upper limit of the damage you need. But this, this league, we got Valdo's maps. So Valdo's maps are actually, in certain cases, more difficult than uh, 6k delve. Because on the top, top, top end, they can look like this. So 
what I'm about to do is the blasted monolith. Let's see if I have the, the mods at the start. So the blasted monolith is the DPS check. Uh, a person in my chat made this map. Uh, there's a couple maps out there like this that are basically only completable by mana stackers. And the blasted monolith is known as the DPS check because if you beat the map... At the end, you got to read a nice message that says, Congratulations, you've beaten the DPS check. If you did this on a non-mana stacker, like, especially congratulations. Uh, the funny part there is that, to my knowledge, this build has been beaten, this map has been beaten by two builds. My Archmage Penance Brand Dissipation setup has beaten this map. It's worth noting, though, that uh, Penance Brand Dissipation is going to get nuked from orbit. So, yes, it will still be strong, and I imagine even with, like, a 70% nerf, it would still be able to clear Blasted Monolith in that setup, because I have overkill damage on that setup. Even 70% nerf, I think I could pretty comfortably clear it in the timer. To my knowledge, I've checked, I've scoured the land, there is a, only two builds that have cleared this map. And what you're about to watch right here is the second clear of the Blasted Monolith. It is using Molten Strike of the Zenith on this setup. So, maybe I'll watch this double speed. Is that meta? We just speed up? Alright, we'll go double speed here for, like, condensed video. I, I know I like to ramble and make, like, 45-minute videos, so I'll try to be a little time efficient. Um, so, this map has 10% less damage take or dealt per item equipped. With 9 items equipped... That's 90% less damage, okay? The map also has 100% Delirium, which on unique monsters is an 80% damage reduction, giving 50 times EHP to the feared, meaning they approximately have 4 billion health, plus the ghost mods, which can push them up to over 20 billion. Because some of the ghost modifiers give them, like, more life, reduced damage taken, more res, 50% uh, of life gained as energy shield. Like, there's some crazy tanky ghost mods. And things like Cortex, or uh, there's a Delirium damage reduction, they just take crazy damage reduction. So, the Feared in this map can have as high as 20 billion EHP, that's 10 Delve bosses. Sometimes higher, but that's like maybe the like, consistent top end. Um, but you have, uh, next you have Union of Souls. Here's the Feared, let's watch the Feared. There goes Synthate, there goes Elder. I think I do die in this, yeah, I do die in this. Um, so this wasn't, like, a good, like, cherry-picked demo, but it's still 100% Delirium Feared. Oh, yeah, this this Feared isn't ghosted, but it, it is 100% uh, Delirium Feared. Um, but you have Union of Souls, which does not affect the Feared, but uh, Union of Souls is a modifier that normally is on a blue pack, that uh, the linked members of the blue pack uh, gain 30% increased maximum life um, every time one of the members of the pack dies. This modifier can be on Valdo's maps, though, and it affects the entire map. So, a canyon typically has about 1,300 monsters in this setup with 100% Delirium. And that means the monsters get to about 500 times HP. So, the blue monsters in this setup take 99 or 96% reduction from 100% Delirium. They take 10, 90% reduction from uh, the items equipped, so that's 250 times the HP. Then they get 500 times the HP from Union of Souls, which puts their effective health by the end up to around 50 billion. So they're actually significantly tankier than the Feared. And there I go. That's mapped down. Um, the total time, I believe, is 4 minutes and 17 seconds. Because the final mod here that really matters, and this is why it's called the DPS check, is area becomes lethal after some time. This is a 5-minute timer. Which is really evil in a map that's just like almost pure tank mods with feared. Because you, if you don't win in 5 minutes, you die. So it's a 10 second countdown. So it's actually 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Because the countdown starts at 5 minutes. But. I beat this in 4.17. So I was 53 seconds ahead of the timer. And if you beat this map. You get the, the damage check message congratulations on passing the dps check if you aren't a mana stacker kudos to you once again i do believe there hasn't been a non-mana stacker to beat this uh i asked rudy and he says that he can beat it he's pretty sure 
if he drops all defense and goes pure damage. Because his delve setup that he's at 27k delve with, I think on the top end has 1.3 single target. But he's kind of split between defense and offense and speed right now. But he he thinks that if he goes all in on damage, he can beat this. So probably Rudy's delve build with all damage and no defense like has a shot. Because he's got... You do need to be tanky for 100% Delirious Feared and having all these monsters on your screen. Like, your normal glass cannon build isn't going to beat this. But his delve build's, like, probably three times tankier than it needs to be to beat this. And maybe Jodox's armor stacker could beat this. But as far as I've seen evidence of, this is the second build to clear this map. And unfortunately for the message, both of them were mana stackers. So I, I think... I think there's been two builds that have beaten the check, but I don't think anyone's got their kudos bar. So, lastly, what I'll show off here is I'll show off a little bit of Delve. Um, this is actually a pretty good setup for Delve, because like I said, Awakened uh, Ancestral Call is just really good. So, I'm going to just show off three Delve nodes. It's, it's kind of a perfect setup here. I'm, I'm right around 2,000. And I have two tier 3 Azerites in a row, which is a good demo. And they have a lot of mods. It's a 7 mod, a 9 mod, and then a 9 mod Beyond Node. And if you've paid attention, Beyond Nodes, at least as of last league, were the hardest thing in Path of Exile. I do think there's probably about 5 Valdos maps that are harder than a Deep Delve Beyond Node. Maybe ten, If you don't count Void. Like, if you don't count Void as, like, difficulty, because it's kind of fake difficulty. It doesn't make the map harder, it just makes it riskier. There's, there's, a, there's a small handful of all those maps that can be harder than this, but I'm going to show off a little bit of Delve. Um, so I'm going to just phase run to the node because that's, you know, a way to speed this up. I can kill stuff in the hallway, but I'm just going to go fast. Show, show you what you want to actually see. So I'm going to put on... Uh, I, that's one clunky thing is I have to put back on... Molten Strike, or, uh, Energy Blade after I Weapon Swap. A little annoying, but, like, it's just a good setup. Like, this is gonna be a pretty modded 2k Tier 3 Azerite, Tier 3 Azerite, and Beyond Node. And I, I really shouldn't struggle that much. Like, there might be a couple awkward parts, but... In the, in the Delve testing I've been doing with this, it's pretty much just, like, crushed everything. I, I think this would do pretty well at 6k. I think it would die... Not unheard of. Like, I think it'd die occasionally at 6k. Like, hard nodes would kill this, but... With, you know... The power of just trying again... I think you could clear pretty much any node at 6k with this. Oh, dang. Oh, uh, I have the wrong... Okay, I don't have... I have my keybinds wrong. I just turned off Arctic Armor. Let's put on uh, Vault Discipline, maybe? There we go. Alright, let's see what the damage is like. Okay, well, I tried to mouse over the unique, and he died in one zenith proc. Okay. Alright, a little bit awkward, because I didn't have the setup right for Delve, but... Uh, another tier 3 Azerite in an even harder zone. I'll just, uh, run to this one. I'm using the power of Leap Slam, an ethical movement skill. Not one of these, like, Frost Blink, Wind Reblow... Okay, that's really bad. The desync. I've been having a little bit of lag since the patch that, like, cleared cash. I, I think everyone's been having that lag. But, uh... I had to go to predictive to kind of fix it, but... Uh, the Beyond node coming up next should be pretty spicy, though. I'll add this note. Like, I'm doing this demo testing the high end. Because that's the way I typically build builds. Is... I, I see, can the build work at the absolute edges of the game? Because in my opinion, like, I when I play the game, I want to make the strongest character, right? So if I play a build that's really good early game, but it's really bad end game, I don't want to play it. Um, so I'm doing the testing on this build on an extremely high budget. Like, that's that's a given, right? Like, this this isn't like my, hey guys, Molten Strike Design League starter, whatever. But that's because I want to see... Can this build go to the limit? Oh, I, I, my balance. Oh, hang on. One shot him. All right. Can this build go to the limit? That's that's what I always want to test. So I'm testing it at high budget right now because of that. But uh, the thing is, 
if I determine that I want to play this build, like, and get, look at this, look at this Beyond node. This is the hardest node at 2k, and it's pretty jacked. This is going to be interesting. I don't know if I'll win. Maybe. I might die. But I like to test for the end game and then backtrack, and if it, if it looks good end game, then I'll go earlier game for the setup. Just to, uh, you know, oh, that was a bad... Okay. Well, hey, technically, technically I didn't die to the Beyond Node. Uh, I died trying to click the thing. All right, let's try that again. Let me just phase run there. Make this a little more uh, reliable, you know. Because if it, if it can work endgame, then it can work, period. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make it budget later, you know? So if we get patch notes in the coming, uh, week that suggest that this setup is going to be really good next league, I'll probably revisit this and try to scale it down to an early game setup. Uh, that seems like the logical thing to do to me. There's no, there's not much for a hard requirement that says this can't work on a lower setup. Holy cow. All right. Alright, that's a little tricky there. Maybe I bit off more than I can chew on this node. I'll beat it, I'll beat it, I'll beat it. If I don't, then whatever. Omega lol. But, uh... Let me give this one more try here. I think one thing that can fix the... Uh, like, there's a little bit of clunkiness, because the way I put the setup together, just to test... Uh, and the main clunkiness is attack speed. Like, if you're noticing this right now, my attack speed's super low. Because I, I, I haven't really, like, altered this to be, like, a, you know, a dedicated melee build. This is more or like less my current setup with just some melee setup. Um, but if I suddenly had, like, 50% more attack speed, which I could get, I just realized if I remembered to turn Blood Rage on, I didn't. Uh, I've not been turning Blood Rage on at all this whole time. So if I die here, I'll remember to do that. Because more attack speed really helps when my recovery is from Leech. Um, it makes me way, way, way tankier. Because the way I'm dying right now is I'm having gaps. Yeah, let me, let me do Blood Rage. Oh, I don't have the Blood Rage gem in. Alright, if I fail this one, we'll call it quits, but... I'll give this one proper try with Blood Rage. How about that? This is what I get for try for doing all my videos in, like, one take, you know? I, I try to do it, be like, from a standpoint of legitimacy. Because, like, I, I feel like videos that have, like, uh, you know, cherry-picked clips aren't necessarily good representations. Because it's really, really easy to uh, cherry pick clips that look good. But it's hard to do it in one take because to do it in one take, the build actually has to be good all the time. Oh, I didn't turn on Blood Rage. Whoops. Hang on. Let me turn on Blood Rage. All right. Blood Rage is on. More attack speed. It To me, it's more legitimate to try to do it in one take. So sometimes I get punished like this because then, you know, I fail. But like... It's a more accurate representation, because, like, that's what happened. I failed. That's that's the accurate thing that happened. Um, because the thing is, I could beat this if you just gave me, like, three or five tries. And then I could, you know, edit the clip together and be like, see, I beat this really hard beyond node. But then, like, I didn't do it the first try. So that's not an accurate representation of the build. So I always think it's easier, or it's more legitimate to showcase them with your failures. Alright. I got a boss. Where, what's his HP at? Why is he not dying? He should be taking more damage than this. This is... It's because I'm just not shotgunning on him or what? Am I not full power? Ah! I got him. Alright, there we go. That was not as high damage as I thought it would look there, but I guess he's got... Ah, whatever. Alright, you get the idea. 
That was like a 9 mod 2k beyond node. Oh! I didn't have energy blade on. Well, that's awkward. Okay, uh, so I was missing like 80% of my damage. Whoops. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, that's, that's actually like a depth 6k node. Uh, because I'm using uh, a dumpster staff instead of a 12,000 DPS top-end weapon. Okay, well, that's awkward. So just imagine imagine that again, but like 10 times the damage, okay? Imagine that Katosh died as fast as the Ahuatl in one hit, you know? That's, that's how that should have gone uh, if I actually remembered to turn the skill on. Well, that's a bummer. Man, I was hoping he would just spawn and die in one hit. But I traded a 148 top end instead of a 12k top end. That sucks. Alright, well, there you go. Like I said, this is not set up right now as a league starter. I could like definitely dial it back. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of theory crafting on this. We're going to have actual league info in a couple days. Um, if it looks like, based off the league info, that this setup could be good, I'll probably make a more, like, early game targeted guide at it. Uh, so consider this video just, like, a concept. Um, but if this looks good, like, if they just say, hey, guys, totems suck, everyone hates totems, melee builds are getting totems removed, and all that power is just added into the skill gems, like, if something like that happens, then suddenly this might be the play next league. So, if that's the case, I'll probably try to theorycraft, like, a bit of a, like, simpler lower gear setup for this. But, yeah. Molten Strike of the Zenith. Uh, with Energy Blade. That is apparently optional for a 2k Beyond node. Um, just, just imagine it doing 10 times the damage, you know? But, uh, I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> Dude, that sucks. I was supposed to spawn the boss and just fuck 